In previous videos, we have talked about a number of theories about what may happen to Drogon after Game of Thrones. In the sequel to Game of Thrones, Snow, a series based on the life of Jon Snow, we could have the opportunity to see Drogon in action again. It would be much better, since we don't have to wait for him to grow up, as Drogon is already an adult dragon. In this video we will be retouching four very interesting theories. The four theories preferred by my faithful ravens. If you like this kind of content, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. So without further ado, let's dive into this universe and discuss these theories together. Welcome to the Three-Eyed Raven. Number 4 One of the unanswered questions at the end of Game of Thrones is what happened to Drogon, the only dragon that survived Daenerys Targaryen's battles. After destroying the Iron Throne and escaping with the body of the Mother of Dragons, we saw it fly away in the distance. But what happened to this dragon? Where did it go and how will it return to Jon Snow's series? After Jon Snow was persuaded by his sister Arya and Tyrion Lannister, he decided that the way to keep his sisters and the kingdom protected was to kill his queen. The connection between dragons and their riders is inexplicable. Or at least it has been for the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. There are theories that point to the fact that ancient blood wizards, from the city of Valyria, made experiments with different beasts and humans. Others claim that dragons are almost gods, and that they choose who to follow. What is clear is that the connection between dragons and their riders goes far beyond that of a master with his pet. Many times dragons display the emotional traits of their riders, as if instead of being domesticated creatures, they were the avatar of their own rider. As in the case of Daemon with Caraxes, who appears to be exactly the same in temperament as his rider. And in the case of Renera, which we saw how even Syrax felt her labor pains. In fact, the reason why Eryx attacks Vagar is because Lucerys is too afraid and feels a real danger, in the same way Vagar is feeling the emotions of his rider Aemond. Also, we saw how Vagar had disobeyed Lena Valerian's order, when she ordered him to finish her off, but after Lena transmitted her emotions to him, Vagar understood. Dracarys! 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 Understanding that dragons are incredibly intelligent creatures, and that they have an understanding of their surroundings, on an emotional level. We understand why Drogon destroyed the Iron Throne. Obviously, Drogon doesn't understand the story of Aegon and his conquest, it doesn't understand anything about the Game of Thrones, but he did grasp Daenerys' emotions the moment she saw the throne. She understood the importance of this place for her mother, and possibly also felt when Jon Snow betrayed her, it felt all that pain and frustration. The emotional intelligence of these creatures helps them to understand the interactions of their riders with their environment. The fact that Drogon destroyed the throne, and not Jon, means that in her last moments of life, Daenerys did not wish to take revenge on Jon. Possibly she herself understood that she got to that point because of this throne, and wished she was somewhere else. By understanding the connection between the riders and dragons, we understand that Drogon destroyed the throne because Daenerys is the one who felt all this frustration, as she lost everyone because of this chair. When we see it from this point of view, we also understand that this is the reason why Drogon has escaped to Volantis. If Drogon is really acting out of what Daenerys felt those last moments, perhaps what Daenerys wanted was to destroy the throne and escape far away, possibly to Volantis. We have seen Volantis in the series, since in this place Daenerys had freed the slaves, from one of the regions with the most slaves among the Seven Kingdoms. 
perhaps Daenerys in her last moments of life, understood that her purpose was not to gain a throne. The throne had taken away everything she wanted. What really gave her purpose was to have freed people from slavery, perhaps remembering this, she had the desire to return to Volantis. These thoughts and frustrations affected Drogon, who destroyed the throne and then escaped to Volantis with Daenerys' body. We first learn that it escaped to this place, as Bran asks Sam about this dragon. From Drogon? Any word? Farther away the better. He was last spotted flying east. Perhaps I can find him. Something interesting about this, is that Bran seems to have a knack for knowing everything that happens with the men. But he asked about Drogon as if it was hard to know where it is. Perhaps the magic that dragons have makes them immune to the three-eyed raven's visions. Or perhaps it is that the raven needs to know where the animal is, or the person he is supposed to see. However, this shows a limitation in Bran's abilities, which makes him vulnerable, since if a person decides to steal this dragon and attack King's Landing, perhaps the powers of the three-eyed raven would not be enough. In the Song of Ice and Fire book, it is mentioned that Bran saw a vision of dragons in Ass High. This vision could have shown dragons from the past, but it could just as easily have been from the present, which could mean that there are more dragons around these regions. But, it does mean that Bran could see dragons with his powers, just not in a specific way. We will be creating a video of Bran's powers in the future. Now, if Drogon escaped to Volantis, this could be because of Daenerys' desire to escape to a place where people loved her because she was the Liberator. We know that after a rider loses their life, dragons usually stay quiet in isolated places, as it was in the case of Vermithor, who returned to Dragonstone and stayed away from everyone after the death of King Jaehaerys. It was not until Daemon visited it in its cave that the dragon had contact with other people again. Unlike Vermithor, who had already become accustomed to Dragonstone, Drogon feels that his home is in Essos, in the regions near Valyria. Volantis is close to this ancient city, and this region is full of volcanic activity, which makes it pleasant for dragons. Perhaps, Drogon decided to get as far away as possible from Westeros to the place he considered his home, the place where Daenerys found love. We also don't know if Drogon escaped to this place to reproduce, since these volcanic places are ideal for these creatures to be born. It is worth noting that some Westeros maester claimed that dragons can change gender to reproduce, which means that Drogon could have offspring. Now, beyond the theories of Daenerys' resurrection, what remains as a Game of Thrones question is why Bran is so interested in finding the dragon. Could it be that Bran simply wants to know where this creature is? Perhaps to maintain safety in the kingdom, or does he want to use it as a weapon? Would he simply keep an eye on it, or will he decide whether to take down Drogon? How does this connect to the Jon Snow series? One possibility about Drogon, is that it is declared a dangerous creature that must be hunted, it would not be the first time that attempts are made to eradicate the dragons of Westeros. Perhaps Bran gives the order to end the life of this dragon, and it is Jon who ends up claiming him and trying to survive with him. I don't think Jon would look kindly on Drogon being slaughtered. After all, Jon is the last Targaryen, and Drogon is the last dragon as far as we know. It makes the most sense for Jon to claim this dragon, and perhaps Jon's series will focus on this. Now, in a previous video I mentioned to you that the series Blood Moon was cancelled, because it didn't have certain elements that fans considered to be part of the Game of Thrones universe. Mainly the dragons and the throne. It was for this reason that the House of the Dragon was given the green light. Jon Snow's series comes to the table after Blood Moon was rejected, so there is no doubt for me, that one of the company's demands to Kit Harington for the creation of its spin-off, is the presence of these elements dragons and a political battle for power in Westeros. That leaves us, inevitably, with a story. Jon Snow claiming Drogon, and then fighting to become King of the Seven Kingdoms. 
In my opinion, the Jon Snow series could star as something personal. A more reflective story of his character dealing with the consequences of his actions. But it would quickly transform into the rebuilding of the Targaryen family. And Drogon could be the new Balerion, a dragon that represents the beginning of a new cycle for the Targaryens in Westeros. Number 3. When we saw Drogon taking Daenerys' body, we thought it was a sad moment in the life of this dragon, after all he is the last of his kind to live on this planet. Or is he? What would you think if I told you that Drogon is not the last dragon in Game of Thrones, and other dragons could represent a new threat in Jon Snow's series? To understand why Drogon is not the last dragon, and how this connects to Jon Snow's series, we must transport ourselves to a vision Bran Stark, the three-eyed raven, had in the books. The prophecy reads as follows. He lifted his eyes and saw clearly across the narrow sea, towards the free cities and the green Dothraki sea and beyond. Toward Vis Dothrak beneath his mountain. Vis Dothrak, city of the horse lords. Toward the legendary lands of the Jade Sea, toward Ass High by the Shadows, where dragons stirred beneath the dawn. Finally he looked to the north. He saw the wall shining like blue glass, and his bastard brother John sleeping alone in a cold bed, his skin turning pale and hard as the memory of all warmth fled from him. And he looked beyond the wall, beyond endless snow-covered forests, beyond the frozen coast and the great rivers of blue and white ice and the dead plains where nothing grew or lived. He looked north, toward the curtain of light at the end of the world, and then beyond that curtain. He looked deep into the heart of winter, and then he cried out in fright, and the heat from his tears burned his cheeks. Bran has this vision after he falls out of the window because of Jaime Lannister, so the fact that Bran sees a danger in the north, and dragons in Ashai is very interesting but especially the fact that he sees his brother John sleeping on the wall. This is Bran's first prophetic vision. The interesting thing about this, is that it could be a vision of something that has not yet happened. When reading this vision, we might think that Bran is seeing John in the north as he had just rejoined the Night's Watch, but there is something that doesn't make sense in this vision. Bran mentions that he saw dragons in Ass High by the Shadow, at dawn. There are two options, either there are more dragons in this universe, or Bran was having a vision of the future. A future that has not yet happened in Game of Thrones. First let's look at the option where more dragons exist in this universe. To understand why Drogon might not be the last dragon, we must transport ourselves to a time long before Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. Possibly long before the creation of the city of Valyria. There are legends that say that dragons and dragon lords could be found in the most remote regions of Essos, especially in Sothorios and Ass High. It is believed that the first people to tame dragons were inhabitants of Ass High by the Shadow, and they achieved this through blood magic. Then traveled to Valyria where they taught Daenerys' ancestors how to ride these wild creatures. If this is the case it means that the vision Bran had was not about Drogon but about dragons that still exist in this world but that we have not seen. On one occasion Daenerys mentions that she had heard the origin of the dragons came from Ass High. However, there is something that contradicts this perspective. And that is because George Martin mentioned this vision of Bran was a prophetic vision, something from the future. If this is the case it does not make sense that Bran saw dragons in Ass High, unless this was Daenerys' destiny in the future. Daenerys received the three dragon eggs that allowed her to become a threat in Westeros. These dragon eggs are believed to have come from the lands of Ass High. 
Later a masked woman gives Daenerys advice and hints that Daenerys should head towards Ass High. And in the House of the Undying, one of them tells Daenerys that in order to turn on the light, she must pass under the shadow, which many have interpreted as a command for Daenerys to travel to this ancient city. But do we know if Bran's vision is a prophecy or a memory of the past? In 2015 the original idea for Game of Thrones was published, an article of which we will be creating a video soon. In this article it is revealed whether this vision of Bran is a vision of the past, present or future. We can read a writing from George Martin's own hands from 1993 where he says the following. Young Bran will come out of his coma after having a strange prophetic dream, only to discover that he will never walk again. He will turn to magic, initially in hopes of restoring his legs, but later on his own. When her father Ned Stark is executed, Bran will see the shape of fate descending upon them all. However, nothing he says can stop his brother Rob from summoning the forces into rebellion. This confirms that Bran's vision is from the future. The most important piece of this puzzle has fallen into place. Now that Jon Snow is back in the north, and Drogon is headed to Volantis with Daenerys' body, the vision Bran had could make sense. If Bran saw past the end of Game of Thrones, this could explain why he saw dragons in Ass High. Which could mean that Drogon was not only on his way to Volantis, but that he could carry Daenerys' body to Ass High, the place where he had already been prophesied that she must go. We can also see in the vision that Bran sees Jon sleeping in the north. If Drogon is really going to carry Daenerys' body to Ass High, simultaneously Jon would be in the north, since it was there where we saw him at the end of Game of Thrones. And the most disturbing thing about the vision, is that Bran sees how there is something beyond in the north that caused him to cry. If Bran's vision is really from the future, it means that Drogon is heading towards Ass High, that there is still danger beyond the wall in the north, and the story is not over. Is it Daenerys' destiny to resurrect and travel to Ass High to find more dragons, or to discover the real danger that is coming? Was Bran's vision really a prophecy of something that has not yet happened? Let me know what you think about this theory. Are there more dragons we haven't seen yet? Number 2. When we talk about resurrections in the Game of Thrones universe, we usually think about the Red Priestesses, and how the Queen of the Ashes will rise again. But maybe Daenerys' return will not be the way we expect. What would you think if I told you that the real reason why Drogon did not finish Jon Snow, is because Daenerys' consciousness was transported to this creature? Do you want to know what I'm talking about? The story of Daenerys, the mother of dragons, also known as the Queen of Ashes, has been the subject of considerable discussion and debate. Her dramatic evolution throughout the series, grabbed the attention of the entire audience. The last exiled Targaryen princess, who ended up becoming a conqueror. However, the ending was unsatisfactory for many of the fans, who did not agree with the fact that Daenerys was shown as a cruel person, in the last moments of her life. It was up to Jon Snow to eliminate the threat of a Mad Queen with far more powers than Ares Targaryen. But there's a theory that actually Daenerys' consciousness was transported to her dragon, a phenomenon that has happened before in Game of Thrones, and that could explain why Drogon did not end Jon Snow's life. Let's dive deeper into this theory, shall we? To understand how this transfer of consciousness could have occurred, we must analyze several points. First, we must talk about the bond that exists between dragons and their riders. 
dragons in the Game of Thrones universe are not simply wild creatures, but mystical beings or entities that have a spiritual or magical connection with their riders. A link that cannot be broken, and that goes beyond direct communication. In the House of the Dragon, we saw when Rhaenyra Targaryen was giving birth, and her dragon also felt her pain. <laughs> According to Westeros tradition, dragons and their riders are united by a magical bond beyond what is purely physical. Throughout Game of Thrones, it becomes evident that Daenerys possesses a unique connection with her dragons, especially Drogon, the largest and fiercest of the three. On several occasions, it is shown how Daenerys and Drogon seem to communicate not quite with words, he reacts quickly to Daenerys' emotions. Just as Caraxes could feel all of Daemon's emotions, and went to his defense when he sensed danger. But how could Daenerys transfer her consciousness to her dragon, and is this really possible? The theory of consciousness transfer stems from a belief in northern Westeros. The Stark family has the particularity that some people born from this lineage, have the ability to be skin changers, which allows them to transfer their consciousness to dire wolves and other animals. Skin changers have no gender distinction, as they can be male or female. They also do not have a specific animal, as they can dominate any animal as long as they have a special empathy for it. Although it is not known if they have a limited number of animals they can control. What is known is the ease of entering the animal's mind when the skin changer and the animal share some kind of bond. However, the interaction between the minds of the animal and the skin changer can influence the two personalities with negative effects for the human if the animal influence is not kept under control. Could it be then that Daenerys at the end of her days became a skin changer? The most interesting thing about this theory is that there is already a precedent in the Game of Thrones universe. Orel was a wildling who had the ability to enter the minds of other animals, the blood of the first men and the children of the forest allow him to manifest this ability. Orel confronted Jon Snow in battle, and his consciousness was transported to an eagle, which he tried to use to end Jon's life. This means that a skin changer could transport his consciousness to an animal, to escape his own death. In the Game of Thrones books, Rob Stark's death is different from how it happened in the series. Unlike the series where Rob calls his mother, in the books, the last words of the young Stark are, Grey Wind. Which suggests that Rob's consciousness was transported to his dire wolf, but again he loses his life. Therefore, Rob had to experience his own death twice. Now, I know you're thinking that this ability is only seen in the North, that there is no way Daenerys could enter Drogon's mind. However, Bran's predecessor, the Three-Eyed Raven, also known as Brynden Rivers, was an illegitimate son of Targaryen lineage, and was a skin changer, even though dragon blood ran through his veins. Thanks to Viserys, we know that the Targaryens have prophetic dreams and visions that are later fulfilled, but perhaps they have not used the power of Skin Changer as they have done in the North. Although in the series, Jon Snow has not demonstrated more supernatural abilities, in the books he has the ability to enter the mind of his dire wolf. It seems that this ability is more tied to magic than lineage, 
and we can't rule out that the most powerful Targaryen ever could take control of one of the dragons she already has a magical connection to. Understanding the premise of this hypothesis, we can speculate what might have really happened at the end of Game of Thrones. If indeed when Jon ended Daenerys' life her consciousness was transported to Drogon, this explains why Drogon did not end Jon Snow's life, but decided to take her anger out on the Iron Throne. Within her surprise, perhaps Daenerys understood that Jon Snow ended her life because of the throne, and in her anger decided to destroy the throne so that no one else could claim it. This may have been the last sign of the great power of the Mother of Dragons, which would explain why Drogon took Daenerys' body and left, for if it was really Daenerys who controlled him, she may have wished to get away to a place where she feels safe. If indeed Daenerys' consciousness was transported to Drogon, this last scene where Drogon observes Jon, would completely change its meaning. Now, if indeed this hypothesis is correct, in the future, Jon Snow begins to search for Drogon, only to realize that his behavior is stranger than he remembered, and possibly it could be implied that part of Daenerys' essence remained impregnated in the dragon. We must remember something important that was mentioned in Game of Thrones, which is that skin changers who spend a lot of time in the body of an animal, end up becoming the animal itself. They forget that they were once human. So if Daenerys' consciousness was transported to Drogon, she doesn't have much time to return to her physical body. However, if Daenerys really transported her consciousness to Drogon, this means that the reason the dragon takes Daenerys' body to Volantis is because Daenerys knows that this is the last chance to get her real body back. If this were the case, and it is Daenerys who resurrects herself using Drogon as a carrier, this would prove that Daenerys is the most powerful Targaryen of all time, and that she is not so easy to eliminate. But tell me what do you think of this theory, could it be that Daenerys' consciousness was transported to Drogon? Number 1. One of the questions that remained unanswered at the end of Game of Thrones was why Drogon did not end Jon Snow's life after he finished off Daenerys. Could it be that the Targaryen blood gave Jon some kind of protection, or is there an even bigger hidden mystery? Could it be that Bran has something to do with what happened? After Tyrion convinces Jon Snow to end the life of Daenerys, he decides to betray the Mother of Dragons to somehow save his sisters. There is a very strong connection between dragons and their riders, even stronger between a dragon that has been born thanks to its rider. According to the Targaryen tradition, when they are born, a dragon egg is placed by the baby's feet, so the connection that is created between the newborn baby and the egg, allows these creatures to be hatched. The magic between a Targaryen and its dragon is extremely important for the development of these creatures. Dragons are able to sense the suffering of their rider, as happened with Rhaenyra during the birthing episode in the House of the Dragon. We saw how Syrax moaned in pain as did Rhaenyra. We also saw how Caraxes behaved similar to Daemon. So we can say for sure that Drogon felt when Daenerys was betrayed. 
he felt all of her negative and positive emotions. This leaves us with the question of why Drogon did not end Jon's life. Why did he turn all his hatred against the Iron Throne? What really happened in this scene? There are multiple explanations in order to understand what happened here. The first explanation is that Daenerys did not want to take Jon's life. When Daenerys was betrayed by Snow, possibly she began to think how the throne has cost her everything, how she lost her family, her friends and now also had lost her love. Possibly, in the last moments of life, Daenerys did not hate Jon Snow as much as she hated the throne, as she knew because of that throne, she lost everything. This may be one of the reasons Drogon did not burn Jon Snow. Perhaps Daenerys wasn't even blaming Jon for what he did, but rather her deep desire for nobody else to sit on that throne was what Drogon felt, and that's why he decided to destroy it. Remember that Daenerys had already mentioned she wanted to break the wheel. On its spins, crushing those on the ground. They're all just spokes on a wheel. Stopping the wheel. It's a beautiful dream. I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. Possibly Drogon was venting all those frustrations Daenerys felt at the end of her life. The second explanation as to why Drogon did not end Jon's life is because of Jon's lineage. Jon Snow is the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark, he carries dragon blood. We saw how in one of the scenes Jon touched Drogon and we even saw him flying a dragon. This could mean that John made an emotional and magical connection with these dragons, taking advantage of his lineage and using this ability to his advantage. Of course, other dragons have finished off other Targaryen, as was the case of Vagar with Lucerys, but Lucerys had never approached that dragon. He had not created any emotional connection with it, so we can say, that one of the reasons why Drogon did not finish off John is because it already knew him and possibly because they already had this connection between rider and dragon. This could also mean this connection between the two has not disappeared, and Jon could go in search of Drogon in his own series. Now, there is a much darker reason, and it could mean that behind Drogon's actions there is something more than what we first thought. As we have already mentioned in previous videos, the Three-Eyed Raven, that is, Bran the Broken, thanks to his visions managed to manipulate multiple people to become king. Bran may have influenced the dragon's mind to help him become king. Bran knew that Jon was the true heir to the throne and he knew that Daenerys had gone mad. In the visions Bran has, we can see how Bran sees the dragon's shadow passing over King's Landing. Although we could say that the raven did not control Drogon's mind during the attack, we do know that Bran saw Daenerys attack in his visions and said nothing, possibly because keeping this information to himself would help him become king. But the theory that brings us here is the possibility that Bran could have controlled Drogon's mind to destroy the Iron Throne. Bran has the ability, not only to control his dire wolf, but he also demonstrated an ability beyond that by controlling Hodor's mind. If Bran can see the past, present and future, control animals and humans, there is no reason why he cannot control a dragon. One evidence that can support this hypothesis, is the fact that we saw the Night King resurrecting and controlling one of Daenerys' dragons that had lost its life, and as we already established in a previous video, the Night King shares many abilities with Bran, since he was created by the Children of the Forest, and they were helping the Three-Eyed Raven. If Bran controlled Drogon's mind at that time, it could explain why Jon survived. Bran could have controlled the dragon's mind to destroy the Iron Throne, as this way they would not be limited to one person who can literally sit on this place. As long as there is an Iron Throne, they will need a person to be placed on it. The destruction of the Iron Throne led Tyrion to think about a new option. 
Bran comes to the table for consideration because the throne was destroyed and because Daenerys lost her life. The Iron Throne was the symbol of Targaryen power, and with this destruction a Stark can become king. In my opinion, the reason Drogon didn't finish Jon Snow is because he already had a magical connection with Jon, and because Daenerys felt more contempt for the throne than for Snow's actions. But tell me what do you think? Why do you think Drogon let Jon Snow live? And if you liked this content, I invite you to become a member of this channel. Each contributor will see their name at the end of all videos. And for more videos with theories, news, and stories from the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You are on. The Three-Eyed Raven